the 2JZ. It's an engine known to many as being bulletproof. But what makes this engine so incredibly strong? Today, we're talking about the engineering behind one of the most notorious engines in the tuner community. But first, a quick 95 second history lesson. The story of the 2JZ started in the 70s, back when bell bottoms were in and Toyota was trying to compete with Nissan's very successful Z lineup of cars. To accomplish that goal, Toyota took their existing Celica, stretched it out a bit, slapped in a straight six from Toyota's M family of engines, and called it the Celica Supra. The Celica Supra didn't sell nearly as well as the Z, so Toyota amped up their game. Over the course of six years, the Celica received multiple makeovers and engine developments. Then, just one year later in 1986, Toyota made the Supra a standalone model, with the latest and greatest iteration from the M family of engines, codenamed the 7M GTE, a 3-liter turbocharged powerhouse. At this point, the Supra was selling well, and Toyota could have just stopped development and dropped the project, kinda like the Mitsubishi Evo. But Toyota was working quietly behind the scenes, and four years later in 1993, they unveiled the work of art that was the Mark IV Supra, complete with a new engine called the 2JZ. The 2JZ was a derivation from the 7M GTE. However, it wasn't bogged down with the many weak points the 7M had. Blown head gaskets, bearing issues, poorly casted cylinder heads and oil leaks, just to name a few. Because of this, the 2JZ became a common engine choice for tuners and car enthusiasts alike, and it wasn't long before the boundaries of the 2JZ were put to the test. However, it came as a shock to many that the power limits of the 2JZ were far greater than many could have expected. But let's get to the point, what exactly made the 2JZ so strong? The 2JZ GTE came stock with 267 horsepower in Japan, so how are people able to push 800 horsepower, over three times stock, with just a couple bolt-on upgrades? The answer, my friends, is in the block. One of the most important factors here is the material Toyota chose to use, cast iron. Cast iron, unlike aluminum, is a very hard alloy with a score of 110 on the Brunel hardness scale, while aluminum is around 60. Hardness is a metric used to determine a material's ability to resist plastic deformation. This basically meaning that a cast iron block is made to handle more stress than an aluminum block before deforming. To sum that all up, it means that a cast iron block can hold more boost than a geometrically equivalent aluminum block. Another important factor that makes the 2JZ so strong is the closed deck block. Closed deck means the cylinders were cast with the block, unlike an open deck engine where the cylinders are added later on. An open deck engine does not have a lot of supporting material around the cylinders, and because peak stress occurs at the top of the cylinder bore, this is an issue when you want to start turning up the power. People will note that open deck engines are lighter and cheaper to manufacture along with having better cooling efficiency, but us 2JZ guys don't care about any of that because race car. The 2JZ closed deck design on the other hand has plenty of material around the cylinders which is the hallmark of the closed deck design. This further increases its ability to handle massive boost pressures and allows you to remain carefree about your engine structure as you do 1000 horsepower highway pulls. And take a look at this. All over the 2JZ you see these supporting structures. They are literally everywhere. Not only on the outside of the engine, but on the inside too. In the engineering world, these are known as ribs and gussets, and they help to further strengthen the 2JZ. Interestingly, some of these ribs are dual purpose because some serve as oil returns. The 2JZ has 11 oil returns from the head back down to the block. This was a very smart move by Toyota engineers because it reduces the risk of oil starvation and blow-by, an issue that unfortunately plagues the RB series. The bottom end of the 2JZ is also incredibly over-engineered. The crankshaft, instead of being cast iron, is actually forged steel. 
This gives the crankshaft incredible wear resistance, over 36% higher than a cast iron crank, in fact. The girdle at the bottom of the engine, also known as the upper oil pan, adds further rigidity to the block. Another important component is the oil pump. Unlike the RB series of engines, which use two flat faces on their crankshaft to drive the oil pump, the 2JZ uses a gear-driven pump. This is a much more reliable design and makes oiling issues very unlikely. The head gasket is another great component on the 2JZ. Toyota went ahead and used an MLS or multi-layered steel style head gasket for the 2JZ. This was a huge improvement over the 7M's head gasket, which was a composite style and prone to blowing. The OEM 2JZ GTE head gasket is capable of over a thousand horsepower and is one of those cases where the OEM part is on par or better than aftermarket. And that just about wraps things up. There are lots of other engineering marvels behind the 2JZ's design, I'm just too lazy to cover them in this video. If you're feeling zesty, please consider hitting that subscribe button, it definitely means a lot to me. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.